Hello and welcome to the Future Fuel Cafe. In this video, we're going to be looking at how a plugin for Adobe Premiere Pro can help you use AI to edit your podcast. The name of this plugin is called Autopod, and I am a massive fan of this plugin. I have made videos about it in the past telling you about how amazing it is, what it can do for you, and how it can be used effectively to really help enhance your workflow and just take your level from here and max it out to the next level and be super productive and save you time when it's used right. Autopod is basically a plugin for Adobe Premiere Pro and it utilizes AI to help edit your videos. So it has three different features that are included in Autopod. It has the Multicam Editor, which like I've already said, it edits your podcasts, which is just absolutely insane. And we'll go into that very soon. It has something else called the social clip creator, which basically takes your, let's say widescreen video and resizes it to be used for portrait. And it also includes other aspect ratios, but I use it mostly to create portrait videos that I use then on my social media, such like Instagram, TikTok, YouTube Shorts. Then it has a third feature called the Jump Cut Editor. And basically what that does, say for example, you are vlogging or you're talking to a video like this to a camera, every time you speak and then maybe you have a pause because you're reading some notes or you are doing anything in between and there's that gap, instead of you going in there manually removing it, it will go in there and remove that for you and then all of the cuts to made and then remove that dead space. It will bring all of the bits where you're speaking together and help you edit the video like that. It's just, again, incredible utilizing AI. But like I said, we're gonna be focusing predominantly on the Multicam editor, looking at how you can use it to help edit your podcast. And previously I've made other videos going into great detail about Autopod, how you can sign up to it, what it does basically give an in-depth tutorial review about how you can use it and all of its incredible features. So if you're interested in seeing that, the link to that video is in the video description below, but I'm not gonna go over again how to sign up to it, so I'm gonna assume you already have and you've installed it on your computer and have it up and running on Adobe Premiere Pro. So let's jump straight into Adobe Premiere Pro and get on with it. So you'll see now we're in Adobe Premiere Pro and you'll see I've already loaded one of my old podcasts that I've already filmed and released. Straight away, you'll see there's two different layers. The yellow layer here is me, so we'll call that camera two because it's on video layer two. And then if we turn that off a minute, you'll see on video layer one is my friend Alex who the other camera is on. And then the color corresponds to the audio down here. So red is red and the yellow is me. So you can see that. And there's a couple of things we have to do before we can actually turn on Autopod. So the first thing we have to do is you'll see here, there's all separate tracks and cuts in the video. So we need it to be all one. So all, each layer needs to be nested effectively. So what we're gonna do is for example, come here, we're gonna right click and go down to nest click that and we can call that Danny just for ease. And then the second one here, we can nest that and we will call that Alex, nice and easy. And then you can see straight away now, we have the two separate layers, they are nested and Autopod will be able to use this and work its magic. So the next thing that we need to do is go up to window we're gonna then click on extensions and then we're gonna go across to Autopod multi-camera editor. Click that and this little window will open up. So once it's finished loading, you'll see here there's a few different options we have to go through. And if you're not sure at any point what the options are, there's a really cool thing you can do, which you can go over. So the cutting method, for example, and when you go on it, it will basically tell you what it is, what it does. We're gonna go up here and we'll start with the cutting method. If we go onto here, we're gonna change it to enable disable. So basically with that, instead of it making the cuts and then removing the parts it doesn't use, the bits that it doesn't use, instead it will disable it. So once it's finished making all the cuts in the edit and we have to go through it, if there's any bits we're not happy with or we wanna change, we can enable the clip again, make the amendments and then carry on like that. It just makes it a lot more efficient and easier to use. So that's why I recommend that. Then the second one is the shot frequency. And what that basically means is how fast the camera changes between the speaker, how sensitive it is. So the higher it is, so if it literally goes from medium to high, very high or more, then it will just change very rapidly. Now, personally, I prefer it to be slower and more smooth and calm. So for me, I actually put it down to low 
and I get very nice, very happy results with that. So I'm very happy with that. And then with the speaker, what we do here is you basically choose how many speakers there are. And I mean, you can go all the way up to 10, which is insane. But for this one, there's just the two. And then again, the same with the cameras. How many cameras do you have? We have the two cameras, so that's very simple. We click on that. And now on the advanced settings here, what you can basically do is choose A, sort of how sensitive it is, but also before it makes that change, delay it by a few seconds or this or that. But what's really nice about this is, again, if you go on this and if you look at the third bullet point, it actually suggests that you use between zero seconds to 0.4 to get the best results. And then the same again on the ignore cut less than. Again, if you look at the bottom, this is the same sort of thing with the recommendation. So I really like that as a very nice touch, but this I don't really play around with or touch because I'm very happy with the results as they are. But again, in your own time, check it out if you want, I'll leave that down to you. Now for the next bit, this is where we put in the speaker's names. So the first bit you'll see where it says A1, A2. That means the audio track one on audio track two. So like I said, the colors, the red is Alex. So that's on audio track one. So we'll call that Alex. And then me is uh, number two. So we'll put that in. And then on the video level here, the first one you can see is Alex. We've already named it Alex. So we'll leave that. The second one here is me. So we'll change that to Danny, me. And then also just something to say, if you see here, it says all speakers. Just say, for example, we had a free camera setup and the third camera was the wide angle where it showed both me and Alex speaking at a wide angle. The third one you'd put as all speakers. So that's again, a really cool touch that it has. But now that we've gone through all this, a really neat thing we can do is save this as a preset so we don't have to go through this all again in the future. So we can just go up to here, press new, type in Danny slash Alex podcast. There we go, and we'll just press save. So in the future, if we come up here, we can press Danny Alex podcast, and we don't have to put in all the settings again, because it's already saved. So that's a nice real touch that they've done. So now we've put all the settings in, this is where the magic happens. So we're gonna press create multicam edit and see the AI do its thing. So there we go, let's see what happens. There we go, it's now doing something, probably thinking. Oh, it started loading, there we go. Yeah, <laughs> straight away, the AI is cutting through the video in real time. Like, look at this. <laughs> wow, you can see it's just doing it to when people are speaking, just analyze the tracks first, the audio tracks. And it's just incredible, it's powering through that. This right now, just to emphasize that I've edited podcasts before where I've done it myself and you have to just make the cuts you know, make sure it's perfect when the person's speaking and is it changing time? Does it do this? Does it do that? Does it have a nice flow to it? And the fact this is even just giving you a base level of where the cuts are and indication. So when you then go through it after, you already know where the cuts roughly should be. Again, make a few minor adjustments because it won't be perfect, but hey, to say this is doing this in real time like this, again, just to zoom in, and yeah, it's just making all the cuts just like a hot knife through butter. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And when I started using this for the podcast, because I'm a control freak when it comes to wanting to do stuff manually, you know, I, this has been an adaptation for me more because of the quality, the thing would it actually do good quality. My, my thing is I want final execution of quality when it comes to the video. I'm a perfectionist. I am a control freak like that as well. I won't apologize for that because I like things to look good. If you put all the effort into it, you may as well do it properly, right? But the fact that an algorithm, an AI, uh, something, machine, all of that sort of stuff can do it this good, it saves all the time for you. It allows you to be more productive, more efficient with your workflow. You can even do more videos in a day, depending how long it is and what you're actually editing. But the potential is there for that. You could earn more money in a day doing this, depending on what your day rate is, or if you're on an hourly rate, depending on what you do. But I'm just saying to you, there are so many options and like that, it's done, there we go. It has successfully completed. So we can press okay, and then we can get rid of this pop-up window here. And if we just come over to any part of the podcast, really, I guess, we zoom in here, 
Just to show you as well quickly, when I was on about the enable and disable feature, if we right click on this, and you can see below here, Alex is the bit that's highlighted. But if we click enable, we'll see it changes to me. So for example, if I prefer this shot for whatever reason, that's where it just makes it so much easier to be able to enable and disable it. Let's have a look. So if we go back on that, and let's go to any part of the pod, let's go here, I guess. Yep, let's play from here. Let's have a look. Maybe I'll oh, hit the big time or something like that. <laughs> but then, um, yeah, so after that. Or if we go to a bit maybe where it's a bit more choppy. Here looks good. This element right here, it's choppy. There we Chop, go. Stuff yeah. like that, but. I only really wanted to do locksmithing. You know, was that because you like to be out and about as well? well I guess you're going job to job. Yeah. So wow, just wow. And just to say quickly as well, when you're listening to that, maybe it sounds like you can hear double audio. Just to say, the way I record my podcast, I give, I use separate audio recorders. So I have one, which is how I'm recording the video now. And then my friend also had one and that's how we did it. And that's where the two layers are there. So for me now, I would have to go back through this and make any amendments to the audio separately. But just the fact that I've already got the camera cuts, I already know where to make the cuts in the audio and it just saves me so much time still. So if we zoom out and we actually go then to the finished podcast, just to show you what it looks like when the audio is also uh, touched up and it's edited to how I like it. This is the finished podcast as a whole. So if we actually just, I don't know, go to this bit, for example, when it zooms in and you can hear Alex speaking, you can also hear me speak. Basically, um, oh no. <laughs> it's nothing, mate. It's like, what, what, why are you in Spain? You're what? Why, why did I meet you here in Spain, not in England? What? And again, you just get the idea of how you can go for it, make the amendments, and yeah, and you could just see how good this is. I just cannot emphasize this enough, but don't forget you also have the other two built-in features as well. So now, for example, that we have the finished podcast and I wanted to take a section and export it as a short for YouTube shorts, Instagram, TikTok, whatever, then you just put an in and an out point. You would go to Social Clip Creator. You would then go in there put in the dimensions 1080 by 1920, put in the auto reframe, press the magic button on that, and it would work itself for you. The AI would resize it for you, you know? It's crazy. It just really, really is, and I cannot emphasize that enough. So yeah, <laughs> I think it's pretty awesome. There's not much more I can say than that. You've seen it in real time, how it's gone through and edited it. And yeah, I think it's, Amazing. The one thing that I would love it to be able to do in the future though, is for someone like me who uses the separate audio recorders when they make their podcasts, I would like it to be able to, after actually analyzing the podcasts and you sort of link them together, I think it'd be really cool if you'd actually be able to make the cuts at the same time to the audio as it does to the video clips itself. So is this good for you? To be fully honest, if you are a person who edits a lot of podcasts, who's starting out editing podcasts, or you create other content similar to podcasts or would utilize a multicam setup, then I think it would be perfect for you. And I say that because I think you should try it either way because you get a 30 day free trial. There's no catch with that. You can use it, see what you think of it and then keep it or not. So I hope this video has been super beneficial to you and that you've got a lot out of it. And I really love creating video content like this in general and being able to share different bits of software that help me and in return will be able to help you. If you're interested in checking out any of my other videos about Autopod, then the links to those videos are in the video description below. And if you're also interested in trying Autopod for yourself, the link to Autopod is also in the video description down below. Finally, just to say thank you so much for watching all of my videos, supporting this channel, helping it grow, joining the community, and it really, really, really does mean a lot to me. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.